Hi, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Orange Pi 5 8 GB single board computer. Now, if you're not familiar with the Orange Pi 5, it's a single board computer very similar to the Raspberry Pi. And in this video, we're going to go over the spec of the board, we're going to take a look at the connections on there, and then we're going to install an operating system on it and do some basic setup. And after that, I'll give you my opinion of this board compared to the Raspberry Pi 5. So let's get started. So the first thing we should do is take a quick look at the specs. Now, as you can see, it has an 8-core 64-bit processor. It comes in various options for memory, but we've got the 8GB version, a full-size HDMI port, and a 26-pin GPIO header. Now, I am going to be comparing this board to the Raspberry Pi 5 8 gigabyte model. And if we have a look on Amazon, you can see that the Orange Pi retails for around $99. And the Raspberry Pi 5 8 gig is around $98. So very similar in price from Amazon at least. So let's now take a look at the board itself. So if we take it out of the box, and we can see it's in a sealed anti-static bag. So we'll cut it open and we'll get our first look at the board itself. So we'll have a detailed look at some of the ports. So as you can see here, the micro SD card slot, we've got the 26 pin GPIO header. And if we rotate the board, we can see the USB connector. Interestingly, the connector on the top is USB 3 and the one at the bottom is USB 2. Then we've got an Ethernet connector, another USB 2 connector, which is shared with this USB-C connector. We also have a full-size HDMI connector, an audio jack, and a USB-C power in. Now on this side, we have a power button, and interestingly enough, it has a little microphone as well. And we'll show you this close up. And here is the first of three camera connectors and the second camera connector. And if we flip the board over, we can see there is an M2 connector. This will be useful if you want to add an NVMe drive and the third camera connector. And if we compare the Orange Pi 5 to the Raspberry Pi 5, and you can see there's an obvious size difference here. The Orange Pi 5 being a little bit bigger. We can also see that the Orange Pi 5 has a full size HDMI connector compared to the micro HDMI connector on the Raspberry Pi 5. We can also see that the Orange Pi has a 26 pin GPIO header, whereas the Raspberry Pi 5 has a 40 pin GPIO header. So now we've taken a look at the board, let's get it set up. So the first thing I would usually do is click on download and then select one of the official images. The Ubuntu image is what I would normally choose. However, I did download and test this image and I found it wasn't brilliant. So I'm not going to actually use that one today. Instead, I'm going to use an alternative operating system, which is Ambien distribution. Now, if you're not familiar with Ambien, it's a superb Linux distribution and there is a specific Orange Pi 5 version that we're going to use. And it has to be said that this works brilliantly on the Orange Pi 5. So all we need to do is come to this Ambien page for Orange Pi 5 and scroll down. Now, we can use the GNOME Desktop Edition but I want to squeeze every bit of performance out of this Orange Pi 5 so instead of that I'm going to scroll down a bit further and I'm going to choose the XFCE desktop version. XFCE is a fully featured desktop environment and is lighter on system resource usage which makes it a great choice to use with our Orange Pi 5. So all we need to do is click the link and our download will start and we'll skip the video forward till that's complete. 
So with the download complete, we should be able to go to our downloads folder and see we have our new ambient image ready to put on our SD card. So we'll get our micro SD card and we'll insert it into the micro SD card reader and we'll connect that to our computer. So with that done, we're ready to write this image onto our SD card. And the way we're going to do that is using the Raspberry Pi Imager. If you didn't know, you can use the Raspberry Pi Imager application to write other images to micro SD cards. It doesn't have to be a Raspberry Pi image. So we're going to use the Raspberry Pi Imager to write our image to the micro SD card for the orange Pi. And you can use other tools to do this, for instance, Etcher, but we're going to use the Raspberry Pi Imager today. So what we need to do is click on choose device and select no filtering. And now we're going to click on choose OS. And we're going to scroll right down to the bottom and click use custom. And we're already in our downloads folder so we can click our ambient image and select open. And the final step is to choose storage. So we'll go in there and select our micro SD card and click next. There's no customization we can apply, so we can click no. And then at this point, when we click yes, everything on our micro SD card will be erased and replaced with our ambient image. So it's really important to make sure there's nothing important on your SD card that you want to keep before clicking yes. So we'll do that and we'll skip the video forward until that's completed. So now the image has been written to the micro SD card, we can click continue and then we can set up our Orange Pi 5. So the first thing we need to do is to get our micro SD card out of our micro SD card reader and insert it into the Orange Pi 5. And then we need to connect up the USB-C power supply and then we'll connect our full size HDMI connector and then we will put our keyboard and mouse into the USB 2 connector and finally we'll connect up our Ethernet cable and then we'll boot up our Orange Pi 5. So as you can see Ambient is now booting and after a few minutes we'll be presented with the first setup wizard. Now there's only a few questions to answer and once we've done that, straight in to our new Ambient XFCE desktop. So here we are at the Ambient Setup Wizard. So the first thing we need to do is enter a password for our root user. So I'm just going to type a password here and then confirm. So now we need to select our shell. Now I like Bash so I'm going to choose option 1. And if you're not sure, option 1 is a good choice. So now we need to create a user. So I'm going to type a username here. And then I'm going to enter a password. And then repeat the same password. And then I'm just going to press enter on this option. Now we need to set up our time zone and locale. And these settings look okay for me. So I'm just going to choose yes to that. And now we can generate extra locales. Now I want the EMGB locale, so I'm going to choose two. If you're not sure what to do here, you can just choose option six and press enter. And that will just generate for a few moments. And then it will load us into our new XFCE desktop. So here we are at the pretty cool looking Ambient desktop. So the first thing I'm going to do is start up a terminal emulator. So I'm going to run the command NeoFetch. Now this will show us various bits of information about our system. So you can see here that we're running Ambient on our Orange Pi 5 and we have 8 gigabytes of RAM. So let's now type clear to clear the terminal. And the next thing we're going to do is update the system. So we need to type sudo apt update and press enter. 
and then type our password. And when that's complete, we need to type sudo apt dist dash upgrade and press enter and then type Y and press enter and then our system will be fully updated. So with our system up to date, let's just clear this terminal and then we can take a look at the ambient configuration utility. Now if you've used Raspberry Pi OS, the ambient configuration utility is very similar to Raspberry Pi config. So the way we access it is by typing sudo ambient dash config and press enter. So when the utility loads, we will see we've got a few options, system, network, personal, software. And in system, we can see there's various system related tasks. One thing I would highly recommend doing is choosing the SSH option. And then when it loads, I would uncheck permit root login and then press enter on save. This is an important security setting as it's generally not a good idea to allow root logins via SSH. So once you've clicked save, you can then click cancel to go back to the system menu. So you can select back to go back to the main menu. So another option here on the Ambient config you might to look at is software. So the software menu has options to install extra pieces of software that you might want to experiment with. So all in all, the Ambient configuration utility is pretty useful and I definitely recommend having a look around. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, you will probably know that I'm a big fan of Pi Apps. If you're not familiar with Pi Apps, Pi Apps is a sort of app store that's primarily aimed at Raspberry Pi, but it can be used on other systems also, including our Orange Pi. So the installation is fairly straightforward. We just need to copy this entire command and run it in our terminal. Generally, I wouldn't recommend just copying commands like this and running them directly. I would always check them first. However, I have checked this one and I do trust it, so I'm going to copy this and paste it into our terminal to run. So once we've pasted it, we just need to press enter and the setup script will install PyApps for us. So when the installation is complete, we can close our terminal window and the browser window and we can see we've got a new PyApps icon on the desktop. So if we double click, it will start PyApps. And as you can see, there's a list of all the categories of apps that we can install. So there's a lot of choice of applications in Pi Apps, and I'd have a really good look through and see what you like and you might want to install. So let's just run through how to install an app. So I'm going to install Audacity and this is in the multimedia section. So I'll go down there and select Audacity. Now in this window, all you have to do is click install and then enter our password into the new terminal. We'll just move that out of the way and enter our password and press enter. And PyApps will install the application for us. So when the application is complete, we'll get this window. So we'll close itself or you can close it yourself. And if we go to our applications menu, and then down to multimedia, we can see that we've now got Audacity installed. So as I said, there's a lot of applications in Pi Apps to install. So have a good look and see what you might want to install. So that's about it for setting up Ambient on the Orange Pi 5. So my opinion of this board is I think it's a great product and it does feel very solid and well made and the performance of the desktop does feel responsive for the specification and it's at least as good as the Raspberry Pi 5, possibly a little bit better actually. The built-in M2 connector is really handy to have and it does give it another edge over the Raspberry Pi 5. 
So these are some benchmarks that I did with the Orange Pi 5 and the Raspberry Pi 5 using the same power supply and SD card. So you can see the Orange Pi does perform better than the Raspberry Pi. But I don't think it's all good news. Surprisingly, the Orange Pi 5 doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, which I feel is a fairly big omission by modern standards. And the lack of USB ports may also be an issue depending on your usage. Similarly, the limited number of GPIO pins may also be an issue for you. The onboard microphone is interesting, but I think for most projects it's probably not in an ideal location and you'd probably end up using an external microphone anyway. So in summary, the Orange Pi 5 8GB is a great board with some good performance and it does perform a little better than the Raspberry Pi 5. However, if I had to choose between the two, I would still pick the Raspberry Pi 5 as it has generally bigger selection of operating systems, more custom hardware add-ons and lots more tutorials. But to be clear, I do think the Orange Pi 5 is a great tool and it's a good board to have a play around with. So thanks for watching today. I hope you found this video interesting. Let us know if you've got an Orange Pi 5 and how you found it and some of the things that you've been doing with it. And I'll see you soon.